now. I'm excited to show you this edit today because it really allows for someone to come up with a very artistic touch to an image, whether it is a particular scene or a niche editing that you want to get into, this is a really great way to achieve that. So what we're going to do is get to this end result with just a few steps. Here is the original and here is the end. I don't know if I'll get there exactly again because I didn't write down all the steps, but we're going to um, do it together. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the fresh. The first thing for this style that I did was made a duplicate of the background. The way that you do that on your keyboard, if you have your background selected in your layers palette, is Command or Control and the letter J. That makes a duplicate of the background. We're going to soften up the trees a little bit. A lot of the actions in this set are going to map the feel, but um, doing this one blur will help that as well. So we're going to go up to the top, click on Filter, click on Blur, and Lens Blur. I'm going to keep the settings as I have them right now. Um, if you want to jot them down, pause the video and write it, um, that's great, but it's 238 for the blur focal, radius 50, the blade 22, rotation 58. Click OK. This is about the longest part of the process, is just letting the blur happen. Alright, so we have the blur. It's not very much, but clearly we do not want our subjects blurred. So we're going to come down to the layers palette and we're going to put a mask on the layer. What we do then is invert it. So we're going to hit the command or the control and the letter I and that inverts it, meaning it hides it all. We have a brush and we're going to use white so that we can show it and we're going to show it only on the areas we want. I find that it's easier to invert it and paint back the areas rather than worry about getting any on our subjects at all. Remember, you do have a focal plane, so nothing should be blurred standing in the line that they are in. That would just not be a normal blur. So we're going to start a little bit behind them. And come in and just let it go. Okay. Once you're coming up a little closer to your subjects, you'll need a smaller brush. We'll just go in, and we're a little bit sloppy at first, but that is because we have a little trick to show you. So what you do is let's zoom in. You see that we have the blur on their hair. You hit the vertical key on your keyboard, and you can see where it's hidden and where it's showing. So now I can go ahead and paint it back some of these areas. So I have a white paintbrush because I'm painting the blur on. And now I'm going to switch over to black. Hitting my X on my keyboard switches it over here to black. Get a smaller brush. And we're going to make sure that we paint back over. Even though the red shows that we don't have it on, it's a light red, which means that it is partially showing. So what you can do is grab a large brush, turn down your opacity to about 20, and kind of just slowly wipe this away. And this being such a low opacity will allow it to be a smooth transition away from your subjects. I do see that we have some hidden in the trees, so we can fix that. Um, some up here, we're going to switch over to white. Done. And now you can hit the vertical key on your keyboard again, and it will go ahead and put the photo back normal. Just going to size this. Now that we have it okay, and you can be a little more particular than I am for this video, we're going to go ahead and turn it down. We do not need it as strong as we did it. So probably about 60, 50 to 60 percent transition is great. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is open up our Actions palette. Sorry 
about that. I had to get my mouse back. And we're going to scroll down in the artistic photo touches. We're going to use a few actions. First thing we're going to do is start with a base. A clean base when using actions is really important. We won't need much for this photo. Again, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this at the beginning. This photograph is from um, Amanda Adams, and she is from Daisy Photography, um, D-A-Y-Z Photography. Check her out on Facebook. She is amazing. So we've started with our base action. It just gives us that little bit of depth that we need. You can especially see it in Mom's face when we turn it on. I'm going to go ahead and click the brightness layer and turn it up a little. The great thing about this starting base is it's just a starting point, but changing the opacity or turning on layers, such as if your photo was underexposed or overexposed. So we're gonna click for underexposed and turn that down just a little bit. And we can come back and play with these later. So I'm gonna close up the starting base and we're going to start with um, a fog. So we'll probably, let's go with a movable light. We're gonna put some light in between the, the trees so that there's kind of like a canopy. So what it tells you is that the next box that's gonna pop open is gonna have you drag this light center where you want it. So what we wanna do is click it and pull it up. And as you can see, we're dragging it up into the trees. And we're gonna click OK. I don't want it on the outside because I want it to appear like it's a canopy. So all I have to do is click the layer mask, have a black brush, which will hide, and a very large one. We're gonna turn the opacity of the brush back up a bit. And we're gonna wipe this off of areas of the tree so that we have light shining down. Sorry about that. And kind of sculpt it and get it finessed exactly how you want it. The next thing that I'm going to do is make a duplicate of this porcelain. Control J. Now that makes it brighter, but what we want to do is take one of them and make it a darker color. So we're going to double click on the thumbnail, the colored thumbnail. Click on the gradient and just change this color a little bit, something a little bit darker and we can change the um, opacity of it later. But we want something that brings in a little more. I'm staying in the same um, color wheel, just going a little bit darker, more brown. So I'm gonna click on this middle tone and hit delete and click okay. And click okay. So let's go ahead and um, just lighten the top one, which is the actual porcelain color. And maybe we will even lighten the darker porcelain that we made. The great thing is you can come back over to the layer mask and bring it in. So I'm gonna change back to white and add a little bit. I kind of took it more off than I'd want. So let's add a little bit back for this one. And then you can do the same for the light. Now that you have them set exactly how you want them, uh, maybe just a little bit of a change. Okay. So the next thing that you do is let's put some depth around the frame. These edging actions are great. So we're going to run cobalt. Wonderful. We're going to run family tradition. And let's run... Mm, I think I'll leave it at that for now. So the next thing that you need to do is maybe add a little bit of gold to it. So I'm going to use some golden glow. Okay, and maybe turn that up. Just play with your opacity to get the look and the feel that you want. If it is starting to change the color of your subject's skin, you do need to wipe that off. I'm going to actually come into the family tradition, get a smaller brush, have it on black, and just make sure that my subjects don't have any of these edging actions on them. Let's just make sure that they have nice, clean tones. 
I'm going to do the same for this porcelain. I'm just going to make sure that they don't have any. And they did have just a little bit on their skin, but I thought so. So the great thing about layer masks, as you can see, is you really get to be artistic with them. And with this action, all the things that come into it allow you to kind of build a depth, um, almost a story. I think we'll add some Dawn, so I'm going to click Dawn. Okay, and then probably turn it down just a bit. Again, this is probably something I would want to take off of their skin. So you would click on Dawn on the layer mask and just wipe that right off any areas of the skin. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the before is. The way that I'm going to show you is holding down my Alt key on my keyboard and clicking the background layer. That will hide every layer but that. So there's the before and there's the after. So as you can see, we haven't changed their skin tone any. Um, one of the tricks I'd use I want to show you is open back up starting base. So now that we've kind of got the color feel that we want, we're going to hit brightness. We're going to do Command or Control J on your keyboard. And let's go ahead and invert it. The reason why I want to invert this one and change it to black, which means hidden, is because I only want it to show on my subjects. Okay, so now when I'm painting with a white paintbrush, I am just highlighting them. It's a great little trick. And then you can come over to the opacity and turn it up or turn it down. I know a lot of people um, start to feel like actions overwhelm their image. Um, it's not enough to just play it and decide it doesn't fit. What you need to do is just play it and then make some adjustments like I am doing here to the opacity to fit your needs. Okay, so I could stop there and um, it's pretty great. Let me show you again the before. There's the before and there's the after. But I'm going to take it a step further. Let's go ahead and flatten this. And I want to show you one of my all-time favorite, absolutely favorite actions to use on any photograph. Let's go ahead and let this process. And I am going to grab from a different set. Let's see. I'm going to use from the Magical Light set, the Paint on Highlighter. The highlighter comes in quite a few sets. Okay, so what I like to do is paint this highlighter over my entire subjects. This will really make every subject stand out from their background. Um, but, but there's one trick to it. So let's get everybody covered. And let's make sure we have dad's hair, mom's hair. Let's zoom in now. You're going to notice that this action sharpens everything as well as highlights it. So there's the before and there's the after. The one thing, and you can tell that mom's a little bit soft. The one thing you do not want to do though is sharpen skin. This action is amazing with the different layers. But you need to click the sharpen layer, get a black brush, and just take that off of my skin. Anybody's skin that you have it on, it's just pretty quick. You don't have to be perfect with it. Just wipe it off. Don't wipe it off the eyes. Don't wipe it off the lips. Just off of the skin. Nobody wants to see any definition in their pores. So we've done that. I'm going to wipe it off of mom's hand and the children. Wipe it off their skin, avoiding their eyes. We do want to sharpen up the eyes a little bit. Perfect. So let me hide it. That is before. And that is the after. Absolutely perfect. So let's scroll out. I want you to see the entire images as a before and as an after. Again, we used the highlighter from the Magical Light, and we used artistic photo touches by Color Veil, starting with the starting base, using porcelain movable light, pulling it up in between the trees, and then we just added a few overlays. We used Dawn, 
we used golden globes and we did some of the edges. So we used cobalt and family tradition. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helped you. Please feel free to come visit our site at colorvaleactions.com where we have a lot of great tutorials for editing.